When people are asked what the most boring planet in the solar system is, a lot of them say Mercury. This seems to make sense at face value. It's the smallest planet and a completely airless rock covered in craters. However, there are a lot of things that make Mercury interesting. It's tidally locked to the Sun, for example, though it's a 2 to 3 spin orbit resonance instead of a 1 to 1, like most examples of tidal locking you're probably familiar with. It has a comet tail made of sodium and is the most metallic planet in the solar system, with the largest core relative to the size of the planet. And like the rest of the planets in the solar system, Mercury has a pretty interesting future ahead of it. Welcome back to another video about the far future of the solar system. I've already made videos about the far futures of Earth, Mars, Saturn, and Neptune, and now we're doing Mercury. Like the rest of the planets, Mercury has a unique future different from every other planet because of its present environment and characteristics and its relation to the Sun, the main driver of planetary change in the solar system. When the Sun becomes a red giant, it will change everything, though every planet will be changed differently. Neptune, for example, may end its life in a habitable zone, while Mars completely melts and becomes a lava planet. And Mercury's future is a lot more complicated than it'll just get hotter until the Sun eats it. The future of Mercury could be defined by several different events, including potentially being ejected from the solar system entirely. Over the next few million years, it doesn't seem like anything interesting is going to happen with Mercury. Unlike Mars with drastic changes in axial tilt, or Earth with its life altering the climate, Mercury doesn't really have any environment to alter. It's an airless dead rock with no atmosphere or large scale volcanic activity. It has no moons, so unlike Saturn and Neptune, it doesn't have anything interesting happening in its orbit either. Saturn could eventually lose its largest moon Titan as it's potentially ejected from the system, and Neptune will lose Triton when it spirals too close and becomes a ring system. However, while Mercury may not be changing all that much, the Sun will be. As I'm sure you're aware, in about 5 billion years the Sun will become a full red giant and begin rapidly expanding. A billion or two years later, it'll eventually start reaching the orbits of the inner planets, destroying Mercury, Venus, and possibly Earth and the Moon. However, before we get there, the Sun is going to slowly get hotter. And Mercury, being the closest, will get the hottest. Over the next three billion years, Mercury will slowly get much hotter. From what I can tell, there aren't any studies as to how hot exactly it'll get over time, but given the fact that its day side can already reach over 800 degrees Fahrenheit, it's going to get pretty hot. This could also have an effect on Mercury's comet tail. Mercury currently has a thin comet tail made of sodium, being blasted into space by the solar wind and micrometeor impacts. As the solar wind gets stronger, the comet tail could increase in size, and maybe eventually be made of more than just sodium. Though again, from what I've been able to tell, there's been very little research on this, so I am making a few assumptions here. But notice that I said earlier over the next 3 billion years. The Sun won't reach Mercury's orbit until somewhere around 7 billion years from today, so why am I stopping it at 3 billion years? Because there's a small but non-zero chance that 3.3 billion years from today, Mercury's future could change drastically. The solar system is a lot more interconnected than you may think. Each planet strongly influences every other. Saturn's axial tilt is influenced by resonances with Neptune. Earth just existing prevents the orbit of Venus from being scattered into high eccentricities by Jupiter. Jupiter itself carves gaps through the asteroid belt, and Neptune shapes the Kuiper belt. Mercury has the most eccentric orbit of any planet in the solar system, with an eccentricity of about 0.21. This means that instead of its orbit being roughly circular like every other planet, it's more of an oval shape. This means that during its perihelion, or the closest point to the Sun, it's about 0.3 AU away from it. But at aphelion, the furthest point, it's about 0.46 AU away from the Sun, a difference of 30 million kilometers. This means that sometimes, Mercury is closer to Jupiter than usual. Jupiter's gravity ever so slightly pulls on Mercury during this time, causing its orbit to become slightly more elliptical. Mercury's perihelion processes, or changes its orientation relative to the Sun, slowly over time. It moves by about 1.5 degrees every thousand years. By pure coincidence, Jupiter's perihelion processes only slightly slower. This is very important for the future of Mercury. Roughly 3 to 4 billion years from now, there is a chance that the perihelion processions of Jupiter and Mercury could end up in sync. This would magnify Jupiter's influence over Mercury to a dangerous degree. As in, around this time, Mercury's orbital eccentricity could become so drastic due to Jupiter's influence that it could destabilize the planet's orbit entirely. This could lead to one of many scenarios. One of which is Mercury could be ejected from the solar system entirely. It could also be thrown onto a collision course with the Sun, Venus, or Earth. However, there is a lot of uncertainty about this time frame. 
A 2020 study found that if our measurements of Mercury's orbit is off by less than an inch, it becomes impossible to predict what its orbit will be like more than 200 million years from today. This 3-4 to four billion year time frame is just one of many potential times for this to happen, and it's not guaranteed to happen. The odds of Mercury's orbit being destabilized by Jupiter are likely less than 1%, so it is far more likely that this will not happen. But if it does, it would likely destabilize the entire inner solar system, especially if Mercury collides with another planet. This is also very unpredictable and would depend on exactly when Mercury gets destabilized, if it ever does. Which again, it has an extremely low chance of actually happening. Though the chances of this might be greater than 1% as well, because that study didn't account for the gravitational effects of other stars. A different study did, and found that the chances of Mercury being destabilized are actually closer to 2%, accounting for both Jupiter and the fact that the Sun isn't the only star in existence. I have a full video about this, the instability of the solar system, that explains this better. So, in the most likely scenario that this doesn't happen, and Mercury stays in its current orbit for the foreseeable future, then it'll have a far different future, because the Sun is still heating up. Eventually, the Sun will begin rapidly expanding as it runs out of hydrogen fuel and becomes a red giant. This will cause temperatures on Mercury to rise dramatically, probably enough to melt the surface and turn it into a lava planet, eventually. There's not really much to say about this phase of Mercury's existence, it's just gonna get hotter. It probably won't get an atmosphere, the only thing that'll actually really change is the surface will get destroyed as the temperature rises. Though Mercury is unique here because it's the first planet this will happen to. Venus, Earth, the Moon, and Mars are all much further away, so it won't get as hot as fast. In about 5.4 billion years, the Sun will begin expanding into a full red giant. Around 7.5 billion years from now, it'll reach its maximum size, possibly around 1.2 AU in radius, larger than the orbit of Earth and almost out to Mars. There's uncertainty as to how fast the Sun will expand and how big it'll actually get, but somewhere in this 2 billion year period, the Sun will expand out to Mercury's orbit and it will enter the Sun. To understand the last significant event that will ever happen to Mercury, we first have to understand the structure of red giant stars. These stars are extremely thin, they're almost more like gas clouds surrounding a very dense core instead of actual solid objects. The outer layers of some red giant stars are even thinner than Earth's atmosphere. Because of this, planets can and do survive entering red giant stars, and Mercury will be no different. Instead of colliding with the Sun and being instantly destroyed like some people imagine, Mercury's destruction will be much slower. As the Sun expands, drag will increase on its orbit as the Sun gets closer, eventually causing the planet to slowly spiral inward. At some point it actually enters the Sun itself, and it will continue to orbit inside the Sun for thousands to even potentially millions of years. There will be a pretty significant period of time where Mercury will be inside the Sun, orbiting pretty normally, though slowly spiraling inward. Mercury's destruction will actually be pretty slow. It will slowly disintegrate as it gets closer to the core of the Sun as temperatures increase, until eventually, after potentially millions of years, it will finally be destroyed. Mercury will be the first major victim of the expanding Sun. Venus will almost certainly be next, followed by potentially Earth and the Moon. The Sun will likely expand past Earth's current orbit, but as it does so, it will also lose mass, which will cause the planets to spiral outwards, which is why there's a chance Earth and the Moon will be saved, even if the Sun does reach 1.2 AU in size. And for a while, it will survive inside the Sun before being destroyed. In a way, Mercury is actually pretty lucky. For Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and everything beyond Neptune, they're all condemned to a future of total darkness, or to the pale light of a dead star before inevitably being ejected and then being condemned to a future of total darkness. Mercury's future ends in fire, not in ice, which is sometimes better. Or at the very least, it's faster. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about planets and space exploration.